Okay, everyone. Uh, so, hello, my name is John Vines. I work for AO.com up in Manchester. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about some of the reflections I've had uh, with the adoption of serverless and the impact it's had on our teams. Um, so, I'm going to start with a couple of definitions. Uh, the first is my definition of DevOps, how I see it. It's um, about the principles of flow, feedback, and learning, but it's really about the people, process, and tools needed to achieve outcomes and deliver value. Uh, I've also got a definition of serverless. Um, so I really like this definition of serverless. It's by Paul Johnston. And this talks about uh, a serverless solution is one that costs you nothing to run if nobody is using it. This excludes things like data storage. Um, you're always going to be paying for, for your data to be stored somewhere at some point. Uh, so why would you choose serverless? Well, it scales and it's resilient. This is by default. The cloud providers give that for you. Uh, it's more secure. You don't have to worry about things like patching your servers. Uh, and it's cheaper. So as we've just discussed, in the definition, if nobody's actually using your service, you're not paying for anything, uh, which makes it quite an attractive proposition. Um, so I'm going to ask the question, can we do serverless and DevOps at the same time? Um, so serverless really talks about um, reducing that operational burden as much as possible. And when we talk about DevOps, uh, certainly in a historical context, it's about bringing developers and operations closer together. Uh, so I've got a couple of really naive definitions to start the talk as we start to frame this. So a developer is a person that writes code, uh, and operations is a person that manages and maintains your infrastructure. Um, so throughout the rest of the talk, I'm going to be framing uh, the use of serverless using the principles of flow, feedback, and learning. Uh, these are the three ways, as discussed in uh, popular literature such as the DevOps uh, Handbook, The Phoenix Project, and Accelerate, all great books, all books I'd recommend you read if you haven't already. So let's start with the way of flow. So this is moving from left to right as quickly as possible. Um, and this is an area where I think serverless really excels. And the impact this has uh, on our people within our teams is so our developers actually start writing as little code as possible uh, and need to start embracing things like infrastructure as code. Uh, and our operations people can really start to enable systems thinking, uh, bringing reliability experiences to the team, and helping to build deployment and management tooling so we can deliver really quickly. So our definitions extend a little bit. So a developer is now a person that writes as little code as possible, whether they're happy with that or not, I don't know. Uh, our operations people are people that are responsible for the health of the team's services and systems as a whole and create and deploy and management tooling. Uh, the second way, the way of feedback, uh, and this is about creating and amplifying fast and continuous feedback. This is probably one of the more challenging areas of serverless. Um, but there's a few things we can do to try and mitigate the, the impact of, of these now highly distributed systems. Firstly, is that our developers need to start instrumenting code for observability. This becomes an absolutely key uh, component of our services. Uh, we need to include business metrics so that we know we're building the right thing. Uh, and we need to make all of this visible, so getting this on the dashboards around the business as well. Um, so our definitions extend again. A developer is now a person that instruments code created for observability. And our operations is now a person that ensures system and business metrics are visible in the workspace. And finally, the way of learning. Uh, so this is about creating opportunity for learning as quickly, frequently, cheaply, and as soon as possible. Uh, and this is another area where serverless really helps. It's really quick to get new things up and running. And the impact this has for our uh, our people now is that we need to start embracing things like scientific thinking, having really fast PDCA cycles, plan, do, check, act. Uh, we need to build resilient systems and redefine failures as, as opportunity to learn using things like failure injection testing and applying all of those learnings into defining service templates to give ourselves a great base. And our definitions extend again. So a developer is now a person that deploys quickly to provide new learning opportunities and designing architectures that are resilient to failure. And operations is a person that enables the team to adopt resilient cloud architecture patterns. Now, I'm sure you're all looking at these two definitions and thinking, we're defining these skill sets uh, very specifically for developing operations. And that's not what DevOps is about. DevOps is about breaking down that silo and, and doing things together. So what we actually should be defining is our team. So the definitions we've defined now looks a little bit like this. So a team is a group of people uh, that build systems, writing as little code as possible, uh, responsible for the health of their services and systems as a whole, and create deployment and management tooling. Uh, a team is a group of people that instruments code create for observability, uh, ensure system and business metrics are visible. And a team is a, a deploys quicker to provide new learning opportunities and designing architectures that are resilient to failure. And if we take ourselves back to the question right at the very start, which was, can we do serverless and DevOps at the same time? Well, in my opinion, um, it's an emphatic yes. Our roles undoubtedly change. We have to learn a lot of new skills, and we have to accept a lot of new things. Um, but absolutely, we can do serverless and DevOps at the same time. Thank you very much.